Hey there, Python trainer Ruben Lerner here. And today I want to talk about a subject that comes up in every single one of my training classes in Python, and that is for loops versus comprehensions. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say I have a list of numbers. I'm going to say numbers equals list of range 10. And I want a new list based on numbers in which the elements are the same as numbers, but to the second power. So we could use a for loop for this. And many people who are new to Python say, well, obviously I'll use a for loop. I say here output equals or say squares equals an empty list. Say for one number in numbers. I'll say squares append one number to the second power. And if we look at this, it worked. So there's nothing technically wrong with what I've done here. As I like to say, unfortunately, this worked. Why unfortunately? Because Python has another way of doing this. I can also use a list comprehension. And I can say here simply squares equals, and I'll say here one number to the second power for one number in numbers. And indeed, I get exactly the same solution. And just to review this very quickly, in the for loop here, I'm starting with an empty list, and then I'm iterating over numbers, my list here, one element at a time. And for each element, it's being assigned to one number. I take one number and square it, and I append that result to the squares list. And then I'm left with a list of squares. So far, so good. In the case of the list comprehension, I'm not, I mean, there is a for loop in there, but what I'm basically saying is create a new list based on numbers, but each element of numbers will be squared in the new list. So we're basically saying go through numbers and apply this expression, one number to the second power, to each of the elements, and the result of doing that on each thing in numbers will be squares. Okay, so this certainly works. And this comprehension is considered to be the better, more Pythonic way to do that. And that really, really throws people. They're like, why? why? Why would we care? Like, why not just use a regular for loop? Regular for loops are easier for many people to understand. They're clearer. And they're not kind of this weirdo syntax that we have in Python for comprehensions. So I want to talk to you about why I would use a comprehension, why I would use a for loop. And my basic rule, the basic rule for using comprehensions is, do I have or let's even state it more positively and assertively, right? I have an iterable, that is something that I can run a for loop on. And I want a list as my result. Okay, now I know there are different kinds of comprehensions, but let's just stick with list comprehensions for now. And here's the key thing. There is a Python expression that can translate from each element in the, you know, in the original uh, iterable, to my output list. And so in this case, the expression was one number to the second power. If all three of these are true, then I'd argue you should use a list comprehension and not a for loop. Now, why? First of all, it's considered more Pythonic, more standard. Yeah, 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 that's great. People aren't convinced by that. I can maybe convince you by saying that it's more efficient. It is more efficient, but ever so slightly so. And by the way, it's, it's more efficient because we're not looking up and then running the append method each time. Rather, we're using some built-in bytecodes. It does run a bit faster, but it's not overwhelmingly faster, at least not for most normal kinds of data. It's more a sort of semantic approach. It's more a, how do we want to think about our program? And comprehensions are part of a school of functional programming. Um, and, and among other things, here in the comprehension, we're basically describing what we want to get back. You can think of it sort of like SQL. In SQL, and if you don't know SQL, this is not going to help you, right? But in SQL, I can basically say, this is the kind of result I want to get back. And I don't worry about all the internal machinations of what's being assigned and what's being done there. Here in the same way, I'm not telling Python what to do. Rather, I'm saying, I want to get a list back that has these characteristics. And often that has, uh, it's easier to think about. And yes, it takes time to think in this way, but it is easier to think about once you get used to it. Not everything is appropriate for comprehension though. So when should you not use comprehensions? Well, first of all, if you want to execute a statement and not get 
uh, an expression's value back. And a statement is something that's like an action. So for example, if I want to print to the screen, don't use a comprehension for that. I'll show you in a moment what happens if you do. If you want to write to a file, all right, if you want to sort of, you know, if you want to write to a database, any of these things that sort of change the world, if you're not interested in just getting the list back, but you want to change the world, don't use a comprehension for that. Okay. Also, if it's very complex, and I'm sure there are people who would make the argument, no, 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 you can just use your own function as the expression in the comprehension. That's true. You can write your own function, stick it there, and then do whatever you want. But at a certain point, sometimes things are so complex and overwhelming that even if I could put in a function, it's just not worth it. And then I would use a regular old for loop. Okay. Another thing is if you have, you know, if you have complex conditions. So and it, it's true that a comprehension can include a condition. And the condition comes with the third line. I can do if, and then only if the condition is true, do we actually get output for that expression, for that iteration. Um, but sometimes you have really, really complex uh, conditions. I would say in those cases, yeah, it's okay to use a regular old for loop. All right. Um, so let me just give you one or two more examples, as I alluded to earlier, of where comprehensions are not appropriate, and also maybe one or two of where they are appropriate. So don't print in a comprehension. What do I mean? Well, if I say here, for example, print one number to the second power for one number in numbers, watch what happens. It does indeed print all of these squares. Fantastic. But then I get back, because a list comprehension creates a list, I get back a list of 10 nuns. Why? Because printing on the screen, despite that's what the function is called, print, printing on the screen is a side effect. It's not the main thing that we're, basically it's printing the screen, but what the comprehension cares about is the return value from that expression, and print always returns none. So if you use print and comprehension, you're going to be confused, maybe even upset, and it certainly won't do what you intend. Right? Other things that you don't want to do, you don't want to like write to a file in a comprehension. What you might do is get the list back and write the entire list to a file, but you don't want to have anything that's writing to a file in the comprehension there or even in a function that you're calling from. But here's, here's an example of where you should use a comprehension. Uh, iterating or, or shall we say retrieving data from a file. So my favorite punching bag is Etsy password, a Unix file that contains usernames and used to contain passwords. And I can say here one line for one line in open Etsy password. And what do I have now? A list of strings where each string is a line from the file. And I can play games with this. I can say one line split on colon, and that's gonna give me now a list of lists. And each of the lines there is going to be a separate list. And I can pull out whatever I'm interested in. So I could pull out zero, which is going to be the username. Now I have a list of usernames. I can pull out minus one, do a strip there, and I get these shells, the different login shells, the command interpreters that users get. The moment that I have it in comprehension, I can do all sorts of things with this expression. Again, I'm going to get back a list based on it. And you can see here because I'm running on a Mac and Apple was kind enough to provide me with this pedagogical opportunity, there are comment lines here. And here is a great ex example where I can say, if not one line starts with a hash mark. So what does that mean? We're going to go through each line of Etsy password. We're going to ignore the lines that start with hash mark, but anything that doesn't, we're going to grab the shell for it. All right, so this is an ex example of, could you do it in a regular for loop? Absolutely you could. Should you? No, I don't think so. So I hope you now have a better sense of when to use regular for loops and when to use comprehensions. If you have further questions, feel free to leave comments here. I'm always happy to see them and to answer. Don't forget, you can always reach me on Twitter via email. And don't forget my free weekly newsletter, Better Developers, all about Python and software engineering. I'll be back soon. See you then.